Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving, so I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Today, we are in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm looking for, for Richie, I'm looking for Fonz, I'm looking for Joni, and I didn't find them. I found Argo J, and on the way to Milwaukee, I picked up Rhonda Azell. Before we start today's episode, I wanna set you guys up with some Lead Slingers hand set. Oh, shit. Um, before we uh, start the show, we're going to set you guys up with some Lead Slingers hand sanitizer. LeadSlingersWhiskey.com is where you uh, get all of the adult beverages. There you go. Uh, info at LeadSlingersWhiskey.com is where you email and you can get some of the hand sanitizer. I'm not sure if they're still doing hand sanitizer, but I've got some and I'm setting all my people up with it. So here we go. Awesome. This, this is really watery. Okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to hand sanitize. We're gonna hand sanitize, and we're gonna take our masks off and then talk like regular people. Oh, man. I know. Awesome. Whew. God. And it's not strong, though. It's now good. we can breathe. Rock and roll. All right, so we're gonna set you guys up with some lead slinger hand sanitizer. When I came out here to Milwaukee, I brought two. I knew I'd have one for you, and I didn't mm -hmm. know who the other one would be. And the other one is uh, our mystery guest back there. <laughs> the, the, ba the mass bandit. <laughs> you know she's been this way all day long. Oh my god, my hair's a mess. She's been this way all day long. We we just uh, did some. Is my hair okay? Oh, okay. oh, it looks, looks good. Looks man. good. <laughs> uh, we just did some shooting at one of the ranges here in Milwaukee that you used to work at. Absolutely. And Shout uh, out to Brew City Shooter Supply. There we go. We'll, we'll put a link to these. You said there's no social media. There's no social media, but they have a website. and We'll, I'll, we'll link uh, my buddy who works there. All right. Very cool. Yeah. So they can check it out. All right. Let's do this. We are going to drive around Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're taking the stagecoach across America. And um, we got Argo J. Absolutely. You, uh, you have one of the cool gigs going on here because you, uh, you're a gun instructor. You're obviously outspoken about the Second Amendment rights, mm -hmm. but you've also been a teacher, right? I am a teacher. You are a teacher. What yeah, I'm teach? currently a teacher. Uh, special ed education. Uh, it's more of a. It's not your traditional special ed, but it's still under the special ed label. So uh, we're gonna make a right here. Right. I'm sorry. I've, I've never been to Milwaukee, so. Yeah, and I forgot, so, you know, we're going to get right. lost. So, <laughs> no. Look, I, I, I'm going to tell Amanda Suffolk right now, I never plan on getting lost. I just listen to the directions of the people that I'm riding with. There you go. So, there we go. All right, so you've been a teacher for a long time. You said you have some uh, law enforcement background as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I was slated to be a U.S. Marshal um, and was prepping for the U.S. Marshals Academy or the FLETC Academy in Glencoe, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, training with the marshals and everything and that didn't pan out like it, like I wanted it to, which is a good thing because I think that uh, that allowed me the space to to do what I do now. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to do that. I don't think I'd be able to affect so many people or as many people as I do uh, and educate them on their Second Amendment rights and the civil rights that are gun rights because people don't know gun rights are civil rights. Uh, how yeah. can you protect any of your other rights if you have no means in which to do so? Totally. So, you know, people sometimes would like that gun rights are not civil rights, but you know. It, it is, I had uh, a long time ago, I had a friend that he said he liked to keep things on, uh, liked to keep things in check. He said he was a member of the NRA and of the um, uh, the ACLU. <laughs> that's, there we go. <laughs> that's very, very weird. <laughs> you know, like, like being an educator, I'm a non-union educator, yeah. uh, which I catch, I catch a lot of flack for from my, uh, uh, my peers or whatnot, but it's my choice. It's my right. Yeah. Uh, and I just ask that people respect that. But I mean, I, my beliefs don't have to be everybody else's beliefs. They're just mine. Right. Uh, and I do what I do. 
Uh, I work my ass off every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I give 130% every single day. Uh, that's kind of an example of what I was talking about, but even that wasn't bad. I'm about the driving. Oh, yeah, but that was, that was nothing compared to what it is. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but you know, but, but, it, but it is that, you know, and I guess I'm, I'm living a, a life of service in another manner. Another manner. Um, I'm affecting the lives of the children uh, and hopefully helping to shape the future. So That's cool. Yeah. Cool. How did you get into gun stuff? Oh man, I've always, you know, I guess being a boy, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, being a boy, uh, that's how I get it. Yeah, first. man, like, uh, I remember my first toy gun was this little cap gun, Long Ranger cap gun, Lone Ranger cap gun. See, in the black community, we called it the Long Ranger, but it's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> so, but the Lone, it was a Lone Ranger cap gun. Uh, with the tape? With the little the little tape, tape caps. That, yeah. that, you know, you you didn't shoot those. You just hit them with a hammer, right? Uh, sometimes. You hit them with a hammer you or a screwdriver you know, right. or whatever. But, you know, when the gun stopped working, that's when the screwdriver and the hammer comes out. But <laughs> but uh, that was my first toy gun, and it was no problem. And then I probably didn't get any more toy guns uh, for a while. And then, uh, I don't know if you were, I don't know how old you are, but then Intertech water guns came out. And they okay. looked absolutely real. Like they wow. had like Tech Nines and Uzis and all kind oh of stuff. Gosh. And my mom would not buy me one. Like it, she wouldn't buy me one. And I was just upset, like beyond belief. <laughs> like I was just super upset. And um, so uh, to make up for it, she ended up buying me this, uh, another cab gun, which looked like a little 92 Beretta. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was hooked from there, man. Like, I mean, I just would, from that date, from that point on, I'd, uh, Look in the at that time you could look in the Penny's magazine and look at guns and JC oh, yeah, yeah. and right. Sears, you know, and look in the catalogs and look at guns, you know, M16s, ARs, uh, all kind of guns you could find in the catalogs then because it was it was it was easier back it, then. It was times uh, were more simple. Right. I I like to tell people during class that uh, we can't get guns in the mail. We can thank Lee Harvey Oswald for that. Uh, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. So I mean, you know, maybe I'm dating myself a little bit and showing people how old I really am, uh -huh. but. Uh, uh, it's real. Like uh, we used to be able, I used to be able to walk into J.C. Penney's. Uh, not me. I was a kid. But if I was an adult, I'd be able to walk into J.C. Penney's, pick something up off the rack, pay for it, pay walk for out. Walk it. out. Yeah. No problem. No key. Class. No license. No nothing. None of that. None of that. Yeah. But you know, uh, and I know you live in a, a lot. terrible, terrible place. Thanks for bringing that up, long. man. I, that's really, really good. <laughs> well, you, well, you have to shoot. You have to have a little taste of freedom today, though. I did, and we're gonna put some video here of me shooting your your Bravo Oscar. Absolutely. Two, two, three with the drum magazine. All illegal where you are. All illegal. <laughs> pistol grip, collapsible stock, uh, flash hider with a suppressor. Shh. It's like a muffler on my car. Yeah. And it, yeah. Technically, that's what it is. It's all it is. Technically, that's what it is. It is. And you know, uh, you know, the technical term, you know, people always say it, there's a dispute whether there's a suppressor or silencer. Yeah. The technical term, it, when you look at the patent, it's muffler slash silencer, but it is a suppressor. I don't care what you call it. We all know what it does. Right. So, like, you know, people, there, there's this whole big fight. I got into a whole big stinking fight on Instagram once about calling something a suppressor i mean calling something a silencer when that's what's on the patent silencer right you know but some people just don't want to call them silencers and that's fine because they get a bad rap as a silencer from television from television media. and movies yeah. because non non-gun folks make gun laws mm -hmm. and when a non-gun politician who we think has their stuff together um because they they dress well and they make decent amount of money and they have power um when they when they call it a silencer, we all start to think it's a silencer because these people know what they're talking about. Mm, yeah. But they have no and idea. They have no idea. Like, uh, there was recently a shooting here at Miller Coors. I don't know if you remember that. Um, like, mm, I want to say last fall, mm -hmm. there was a shooting which uh, an employee who happened to be a black man uh, was being racially, racially harassed. And he just snapped and went in and shot some people. And he did not have a suppressor on his gun. They said it was a suppressor because there was a compensator on the gun, but they called it a silencer. You know what I mean? And it wasn't that. Like, uh, and maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I think I do. But, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's just crazy the, the kind of things that people believe uh, once the mainstream media gets a hold of it or, or they see it on television and, and all of a sudden it becomes real. 
-hmm. you know, like the AR-15 that we have in the trunk, or not in the trunk, somewhere, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we may or may not, we can neither confirm nor deny, cannot. but I'll be back in Massachusetts by the time this comes out. Right, right, so, <laughs> uh, the AR-15 that we have in the trunk, two of them, right, <laughs> right, see, so, so look, two of them, like, uh, you know, they swear that they shoot holes in people the size this of a big. watermelon. yeah. You know, and in actuality, and, and and I love the argument, and I just wait for it because it's it, it's like it's like, you know, I'm an alligator just trolling the swamp, ready for that thing to just jump in, you know, un, un, unknowingly, and then all of a sudden they say, well, why don't you get a 22? And I say, well, you know, an AR-15 is the 22. It is, it's juiced up. You know what I mean? That's it. It's the same caliber. It punches the same size holes yeah. as your grandfather's 22 short or long rifle. That he used to shoot squirrels with. Right. So, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, that's where I started shooting my grandfather. Don't tell anybody. Grandpa, he's rest in peace right here. But uh, in the backyard shooting squirrels and stuff in the, nice. in, in the city, you know. But this, it, was a, it was a different time back then. Though. So... Um, but no, you know, and people just don't know. They shoot holes in people the size of watermelons. They, uh, they, they all you got to do is hold the trigger down and it's fully automatic, fully automatic you know, right. and, and it's ridiculous. I told you, I, I'm now telling people that AR does not stand for an automatic rifle or assault rifle. I'm telling them it stands for anti-riot. It, it, it is. It is an anti-riot anti -riot rifle. rifle. You know, and later on, if we get to go, you know, where the... Uh, the civil unrest or riots took place a few years ago, not the recent one at, uh, that was sparked by the George Floyd murder, um, but the ones that happened here a few years ago where I had to go in and get my family. I legitimately went in to get my family in a hot zone that was in, in the middle of a riot with my AR slung across my back, you know? Yeah. And I had to walk in the, into there and pull my family out because where the riots were going, where people were burning things down, my family lived directly across the street, so they were getting uh, rocks and bricks thrown through their windows. Uh, people were making Molotov cocktails and throwing them at homes in the neighborhood. Uh, the beauty supply store that was right across the street from where they lived. I mean, so, you know, there's no way that my son, I'm gonna let my son yeah. uh, stay there. You know, and it's not like it's, it's a bad part of town. It's right. not what it is, it just is where it happened. And, uh, and, and I'm not letting, I'm not letting it go down. You know what I mean? I'm Absolutely. not letting it go down. Absolutely. So. I mean, this is, this is why we have guns, to be able to protect our loved ones. Absolutely. Uh, we, we've got all the other reasons and, and the anti-gun folks to say it's for hunting and you shouldn't, you don't hunt deer with an AR and all that nonsense. It's, I do. it's not about, no, the, the, no, the two, two, three. No, no, but it's still an AR. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But, sure. With an AR-10 with something bigger. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not for that. It's, it's all for for protection. It's, it's all for, for protection. It's and all, it's, it's and technically, it's not for defense of self as much as it is defense of things that are trying to take away our liberties that have the power to take away our liberties. Mm -hmm. I.e. liberties. I.e. the government. You know. But a lot of people don't want to 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 go to that go that route. You know. And a lot of people aren't ready. They say they're they're sec, pro Second Amendment and they're pro gun, but being pro gun and being pro Second Amendment are two different things in my book. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. I always tell when people ask me, they're like, "Well, what do we tell them? What do we tell the cops why we want a gun?" I say, "Don't tell them you want to overthrow the government. Don't tell them you want to shoot zombies. Don't tell them you want to shoot clowns. Have a gun for all of those reasons. Right. Just don't tell the cops because you sound like a crazy person." That's it. That's it. Yeah. When we get to First Street down here, you're gonna. I'll show you where to make it. It might not be First down here. So. So, um, how did you get into gun stuff? Before? So you probably had some. Uh, you said you were uh, becoming a. Uh, U.S. Uh, Marshal, but no, Marshall. I was, I was, that, that had nothing to do with it, man, I, that, you were that, already, yeah, I was already right here, make this left, right. um, uh, like I said, my, I, I was hooked after, you know, Grandpa showed me how to shoot, and, yeah. and then I got that little Beretta, and I just started liking, I thought the guns were cool, you know, like most boys do, sure, but I kind of took it a step further, I wanted to know how they worked, I wanted to know, you know, what was what, mm -hmm. so I didn't really, know about the whole advocacy advocacy side of it or the right side of it uh, until I became older you know oh yeah absolutely. Uh, but I just thought guns were cool man I would take them apart try to put them back together and then once you know I'd get my hand my grandmother had this little 25 uh, for those of you that didn't know 25s are a real thing uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know it was had a little pearl handle on it. I used to take nice. it apart and I was scared one day because I couldn't get it back together the first time I took oh, it apart. Yeah. And she's gonna find it. And, I, and she was gonna know that I took <laughs> it, you know. Uh, but one of my buddies put up a post out of Philly 
uh, a big airsoft dude, but he's a gun guy too. Uh, and he put up a post that if you don't know, he had a picture of a 25. If you don't know what this is, or if you didn't own one of these or play with one of these when you were a kid, uh, our childhoods were completely different. I think everybody's <laughs> grandmother that I know had a little 22 or a little 32 or a little 25 or something like right. that. Uh, and you know, I, I took this thing apart and it took me two days to get it back together. Oh my God. But then I got, and then once I got it though, I was like, oh, that was easier than I thought. And I took it apart again, and then I got it back together again. I took it apart again, and I got it back together. And then I said, oh, this is cool. And I'd always do that every time I got a gun. Uh, and then, you know, fast forward to, you know, 40 something and fabulous, like, this is what I do. You know, I, I build a gun a week, it seems like, uh, thanks to Brownell. Shout out to Brownells. Um, know. Yeah, they, they, they take good care of me, and they'll take good care of you. They're, they're, they're legitimately my one-stop shop for everything Everything I need. Like, every gun that I build from, from the last, for the last two years now, I pretty much 90% of them have been from Brownells, but I just AR? love it. Yeah, I love it. I'm an AR fanatic, man. ARs are That's like awesome. the Lego set for grown men. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm not even going to say grown men because I know women that build ARs too. Right. So, uh, for grown-ups, I should say. For like, gun folks. Yeah, for gun, for gun folks, ARs are like the Lego sets of, of, of the world. Like, it's... It's awesome. There's nothing you can you can't do with it. You can change everything: the grips, the stocks, the, the barrel links, everything, uh, the rails, the, the hand guards, the straight forward grip, the tilted grips. Absolutely. Uh, put flashlights on the side. I mean, you can yeah. lasers, lights. Yeah. You can do it up. You can really ninjify your gun. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. It's the old Allen Bradley building. They, uh, oh, it's not old, but uh, one of the biggest manufacturers here in the city. Uh, and they do a lot. The Allen Bradley family still does a lot in the city here. That's cool. Lots of money. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, how did you become an instructor? Uh, actually working at the gun shop. Working at the gun uh, shop, And, and yeah. like I said, I usually don't talk about being an instructor because I don't, uh, I don't want people to think that I'm out here trying to be super operator and I'm not. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a basic level instruction. I do uh, CCW and basic handgun instruction. Yep. But, uh, uh, that was just working at the gun shop, you know, showing people how to do it. And then one of the instructors said, hey, why don't you take this uh, NRA course and, you know, become an instructor? And at the time, I was like, why not? That's uh, a good question. Yeah. Why don't I? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the next thing you know, I'm certified to, to teach CCW and basic handgun. That's cool. Uh, so Wisconsin is not uh, not constitution carry. No. Do you guys have to have a permit in order to purchase and possess? Uh, no, we do not. No. We do not have to have a permit to purchase and possess. You do have to have a permit to conceal carry. However, open carry is legal here in the state. Gotcha. So, yeah. gotcha, so gotcha. Don't, and, that, and, and, you know, I, I tell people all the time, we're not a gun friendly state we're gun tolerant you know and well, yeah we are behind the cheddar curtain yeah absolutely yeah you know uh so you know we're very free as far as guns go as you can see no limitations no restrictions so yeah you know. I'm, I'm in the gun store at brew city and um there's high cap magazines all over the place what are those right. what are those what are high cap magazines mm. i don't know somebody tell me <laughs> where am i looking i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Yeah, more than 10. You're right. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's a magazine. Some hold more, some hold less. And, and the, 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 the ideology behind that, it's like, if I'm dead set on, if I go into a school or a mall or someplace and I want to do dirt, I can dump 10 rounds, do a mag change four or five times before a call is even made for help. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, what's the point? You're not stopping or, or protecting anything. You're not doing anything not. but hindering good people from owning things that they want to own. Absolutely. It's it's ridiculous to me. i got to be careful what I say. It seems crazy to me and ridiculous that um, in, you know, neutered states, you have 10-run magazines, but there's no limit on how many magazines you can have. Okay. Well, what yeah, is... Yeah, and, and almost, I almost don't even want you to say that because it's like I tell people all the time that, yeah. right, don't give them ideas. <laughs> like, the one time you chime in. <laughs> right. If you guys didn't know, behind me is the beautiful Rhonda Ezel from Chicago. Yeah, you probably couldn't recognize her with the, uh, the glasses and the mask on. Yeah. And, and sh so she's telling me all the way up here she doesn't spend time social media. You know what she's been doing the whole time? On social media. Yeah. But I love Rhonda, y'all. She's, she's awesome. I love her. I absolutely do. Uh, like, we might as well be family. Like... We are. I'm, I'm just saying, we might as well be blood-related family. You know what I mean? Like, like, like the love I have for, you know, and that's the one thing I like about this industry. I know we seem like we're jumping all over the place, but the Great. one thing I like. ADD was cool. 
there it is, man. Uh, the one thing I love about this industry, oh, we're passing over the Milwaukee River right now. You're right. Uh, one, you have to come out here one summer and get you on the boat, man. You know cool. what I mean? Get the lake, and then the lake feeds right into the river. Nice. Uh, if you look right over here to your right, that's called the Hone Bridge, that little yellow arch there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. That's the, the, the entrance from the, the river to the lake. Gotcha. So, but anyway, uh, the, the community is so loving, you know, and people are scared to be a part of the community and come to, to the gun community and, and all this. Damn, she's... Anyway, sorry. Hotty. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the community is so accepting right. of people and so loving. I mean, you've got a few assholes here and there, and you've got a few probably bigots or whatever. Uh, but whatever. This I, is, mean, I mean, there's just, there, well, obviously we're finding this out. There's, they have these in every... You know, there's 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 a hell of a lot more good people than there are jerks. There are, there are, and from the from the onset of uh, me coming into the community, I have seen personally, I have had no issues. Okay, zero issues, uh, and and it's been a beautiful thing. It's been a very very beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh, for me, it's been great. I mean, I was excited to see you in Phoenix mm -hmm. at Gun Rights Policy Conference last year, and you were like, "Hey, um, when you come to Milwaukee, gotcha. it's you and KD." Like, "Hey, man, when you like, I walk in, there's two black guys. Like, "Hey, man, when you when you come to our place, you right. come, you know." Um, so I was able to interview Kevin while we were out there. But uh, you you said, "Hey, come out in July." Well, because the, the DNC. DNC. Yeah, you know, and uh, um, I hate that it. See, this well, if, for those of you that don't know, this is the city that the DNC was going to take place. Uh, the DNC was slated to be here in Milwaukee this summer, uh, but the whole the, Rona. The Rona. Uh, row, 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 row. Right. Uh, I used to DJ at that club. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's now a golf store right, right there. Milwaukee. Yeah, but it used to be a club. Anyway, um, now it's a golf club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm waka, 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 waka. Be here all day. Don't forget to tip your bartenders and waiters. There it is. <laughs> that was my spiel. Oh, that was my <laughs> spiel. Anyway, uh, but no, like. Um, what the hell I was saying. That joke DNC, was so the great. DNC oh, was going to be here, yeah, but the, the, the Rona canceled it. The DNC and, was going to uh, be here. Yeah, I was uh, like, I had it on my calendar. I'm like, I invited so many people because I, and not that I'm a liberal or not that I'm anything, identifies anything because I don't. I'm conservative in my values. I'm very, very conservative in my values. Uh, but I believe the two party system has failed us, put it that way. Mm. Uh, but I feel that there is a particular party that pushes more against firearms and firearms ownership yeah. and freedoms uh, than the other and that's fine that's what they want to do that's fine and if that's who you want to vote for as an American citizen that's, that's right. who you want to support that is your right however it is also your right and it is also your duty to hold them accountable for your voice if they are supposed to be representatives of the people mm -hmm. then they need to be the voices of the people and if you believe X Y and Z then they need to be able to speak X Y and Z uh, and unfortunately, a lot of times people don't buy into that. They, they're, they're liberal and they're gun owners, but they don't know how to tie the two together because all of a sudden I'm liberal and I'm a gun owner and other liberals look at me like I have the plague. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's wrong, but it, it, it's an unfortunate reality. But you have to be able to be vocal and speak your voice. That's City Hall, by the way, right that we just drove past. Right. Uh, a lot of bullshit laws came out of there from our city. Like the fact that there was only one gun store allowed in the city of Milwaukee proper in Milwaukee County, right there. Anyway, uh, so I invited people of all makeups to come to the DNC and they I were gonna special. come. Well, you you, you are <laughs> special because you were the only Charlie. So There we go, you know, the so, only, one's enough. The one is enough. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I invited liberals, I invited uh, people from the LGBT community, I yeah. invited black people, Asian people, Jewish people, uh, all to be one unified voice uh, and all to help progress this fight that we keep fighting, that we have to fight year in and year out, over and over again. There has never been, never been a piece of American uh, an American right that has been so under attack, or so much under attack, constantly, uh, other than the Second Amendment, and it's mm -hmm. ridiculous, and it's it, it opens up the door to attack other amendments, which people say, oh, that'll never happen, but they say it'll never happen this way too. You know what? I I was talking with a buddy of mine uh, recently, and 
Uh, he's an ancillary gun guy. Mm -hmm. He's got a gun. He's got a license. He doesn't carry. He doesn't shoot very often. Um, but he's he's a very conservative dude. And he and I were talking. He says, listen, the pro-gun folks have been saying the Second Amendment defends the first. He says, but in the meantime, you can't say this. You can't say that. You can't say this. You can't, you know, if you say something that someone else doesn't like, you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a whatever, even... It, uh, even if it's not true, mm -hmm. there's still a you can't call you know. And we have all these people that verbally bully people, and uh, and so I'm like, yeah, it's kind of right, man. It, it is absolutely and, right. And you know, we always say that the second protects the first, but then where's we get the first now? Yeah, we get stifled for things that we say. Um, certainly, the media is is feeding us untruths. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, you're gonna go around this curve. All right. This is all redone. This used to be nothing but bottom and the river wharf here, the wharf area here. So everything that you see is less than five years old. Wow. Well, you know something old because it's like that that right. red brown building there. That's yeah. an old building. Yeah. But, this does not look. I like the way they have rhythm on there too. Yeah, that's the name of the apartment complex. A lot of the bucks live there. Yeah, the Milwaukee Bucks, who uh, would have been champions if it hadn't been for the Corona. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, gee. Dude, uh, let me tell you this, man. The Corona is is the, I, I try to call it the uh, the virus who shall not be named. Yeah, we're going to um, go right here and make a left right here on Holton. Yeah, okay. there we go. Uh, I call it the virus who shall not be named. It's the worst thing to happen and the greatest thing to happen because we now have an excuse for everything. Everything. For everything. Uh, because of uh, because of this. Yeah, but I mean, the reality is, you know, the Bucks would have been champions had it not been for Corona. Uh -huh. so, you know, so anyway, but no, <laughs> but uh, but no, it's a uh, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, corona has just shown us how weak we are, I think, as a nation. What scares me about it is how fast we went from what we considered free America to... Yes, sir, boss. Uh, like, I'm like back into slave days, you know what I mean? Like, right. You've got to wear a mask. You can't go out. Only these people can shop at these hours. These stores have to close down. These businesses have to close down. Um, the but mom and pop stores... The bigger stores can stay open because they're essential. Right. But the mom and pop stores, like that one we just passed, Pueblo, they had to shut down. But for yeah. this community, this is a predominantly Puerto Rican area that we're in now, Puerto Rican and black. Um, for this community, that's their staple. Right, that's where they go to get their... their. Uh, so they had to shut down. They go for groceries there. They go for... Uh, it's it's also uh, got some sort of like a uh, drugstore and all this, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, you know, but that's their, that's their community staple. It's a, it's a, they've got hot food there, so people go there to get their meals because they don't cook or whatever. Yeah. You know, and, and it's also a liquor store, which is essential. But no, but you know, <laughs> but seriously though, but that, you know, why did they have to close while the bigger well, yeah. mass, I mean, the bigger major market Kroger, companies, Kroger, Publix, Kroger, yeah, uh, Stop and Walmart, Shop, Walmart, Target, all of them, all why, of those while, 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 while they're open, it you know, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. Like now you're talking about a family who, because that's family owned. You know, and they go to my church, as a matter of fact. But but uh, you're talking about a family, a beautiful family, who now has a hard time making the bills. Make Not only paying their, their bills for their own house and their mortgage and their light and their mm -hmm. electricity, but that for their business as well. And so that, they don't have and, any money coming in. So and that now business feeds the community. Yes. So now the community suffers. And then we wonder why people are complaining. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that Corona is real. I just had heart surgery. If I catch Corona, I might be out of here like that. Mm. You know what I mean? However, like, am I going to sacrifice my freedom? You know, so yeah. that the populace can remain safe. No, because an, un, an a, a, a populace that's not free isn't safe. Absolutely. You know, and that's just what it is. If the, if, if the people aren't free, they're not safe. When you have freedom and when you exercise freedom justly, you are that you are safe. You know, when you when you're a slave, you can you're subject to anything. Mm -hmm. You're that's what you are. You're a subject. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What's the uh, uh, free men have? Keep firearms and subjects do not. Yeah, you know. Also, free men don't ask permission to bear arms. Yeah, absolutely. So, I don't. 
not these bare arms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, oh man, oh man, oh man. Look at that, that Brianna Taylor. Yeah, they still haven't arrested those cops. You know, and I, you know, believe what you want. Like I said, I support good law enforcement, and I and I will always back law enforcement. Like I don't, I don't believe in defunding the police. I, I feel I feel like you should put more money into police uh, if you want to see the change that you're asking for. Mm -hmm. uh, but right is right and wrong is wrong. You're gonna make a left turn here. All right. um, you have to. You're held at a higher regard, in a higher regard, in the community's eyes, and you also have to make sure you do your homework when you're doing something as law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And when you, when the tool of your trade is our deadly weapons, you absolutely have to be certain, without a shadow of a doubt. This is the that the moves you make are correct. Right, you can't take it back. You can't. Right, you can't unring that, that bell. That 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 child, that per, that mother's child, that man's fiance or wife uh, will never come back, and that's wrong, and that's murder. You know, like when you are wrong doing something, it's murder. It may not be first degree murder, but it's murder. Mm -hmm. You know, just like George Floyd, that's murder. You know, just wow. But you know, these roads aren't any worse than Massachusetts or Boston, man. No, this this is and this is nothing near what I was telling you about. All right. So like, this is I'm, I'm taking you the way to avoid all that. So, all right, okay. So yeah, if I if I would take you for those of you that watch this that are in Milwaukee or know Milwaukee, I'm, I'm avoiding Capitol Drive. I'm avoiding Fond du Lac. I'm avoiding those streets where it's like the Indy 500 and NASCAR put together. <laughs> Along with demolition, demolition derby. derby, yeah, like it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, my car's not paid for, so I don't, I don't want to play those no, games. <laughs> no, and and, and and it only takes a second, you know, oh, yeah. for for some nonsense to happen. But anyway, but yeah, man. So you know, like, like you don't want to defund the police. Well, it, give them give them more training so that they can handle these situations better. That's right, and so that we can weed out the police that because. I know a ton of police that shouldn't wear badges. I do, and let's just be honest. Uh, and and I always say, if you were a police before, oh, I'm sorry, it was a language. That's all right. If you were a wimp, if you were a wimp <laughs> before you were a cop, you're gonna be a, a, a wimp, wimp with, with a badge. With a cop and a badge. You know yeah. what I mean? Like with a gun and a badge. badge. Yeah. So it's 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 <laughs> like that, you know. But you know what I meant to say? I meant to say pussy, but I couldn't say pussy. So anyway, like. <laughs> So what I will do is I'll put the cat emoji over your mouth. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, and bleep that out because right. I, I'm I'm doing. It's very hard for me to filter myself. Right that's now. all right. So anyway, but no, seriously though, uh, you know, and that's just it. They're 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 bad apples in every profession. But when you have a profession that's deemed, you know, the Supreme Court deemed they're not here to serve and protect, they have no obligation to do that. Yeah. Then that's fine. Let me do it for myself. But when you carry a badge and a gun in society. You have to maintain a certain level of professionalism, and you sure. have to know what you're doing. You do. Uh, people, people. What I've noticed is people think that cops, all cops are gun guys. All cops are not gun guys. Cops come into my shop, well, the shop that we just left. I don't work there anymore. But they come into the shop all the time, saying, "Hey, I don't know what's wrong with this gun." Well, you loaded your mag backwards. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna have to go around. I guess they're doing right. construction. Are these this guy's doing a Yeah, okay. he's doing dumbness. So. Great. Yep. All right. We're gonna stop it. So, I didn't anticipate this, because mm -hmm. I don't come through here. So. He's not taking us to the, you know, Indy 500, he's taking us to the four-wheeling. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is definitely off-road. Yeah, but, the, but, but you see how terrible the streets are? Man. And this is kind of what we fight for. These are some of those civil injustices that we talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, our communities are the ones that are neglected the most. Uh, this would never, never, never be tolerated where I live. Yeah. You know, however, the flip side of that, because I can't put the blame solely on the government or the city, is that people don't exercise their voices enough over here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't just be outraged when something bad happens and then all of a sudden you're outraged and you expect the world to change. No, you have to be vocal all the time about anything that you feel is wrong because that is your right. It is your right to talk to your local politician and say, hey, my streets are terrible. Fix my streets. Right. You know, that's your job. That's your duty as a citizen of whatever city that you live in. You know, it's your responsibility to get on the people that we elect to keep your city up to par. Yeah. You know, uh, but I digress. So, <laughs> so not all cops are gun guys. No, not all <laughs> cops are gun guys, man. Uh, it, it, it's it's weird to me that people think this, um, and I get it. You know, 
I've, I've had people say to me, oh, I do like guns. You like shooting, why don't you become a cop? Yeah, I don't, I'm not interested in being a cop. No, no. Like, that's not, uh, that's not what I want to do, what I want to be. I like shooting. Yeah, and you know, cops qualify twice a year. If, Once or twice. If that, you know, yeah. I mean, now maybe there'll be, have, maybe there'll be some, uh, higher, some, some, some higher standards. Yeah, some little higher standards of qual, but for the most part, guys have to qual twice a year and all they have to do is hit a 10 inch size target, you what, know, like seven out of 10 times. That's or it, you know, and, and under a certain amount of time, which, you know, my seven year old son can do, right. You know, with a Nerf gun, but still, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but my son is, uh, you know, he's learning, and uh, and I'm not ready for him to pull his first trigger yet. Uh, but he's learning on real guns because I want him to learn the mechanics. I want him to learn uh, how things work. You're gonna make a look to the light. All right. uh, I want him to be able to show me that he will be safe in his operation and in his knowledge before we pull the trigger. Even if I'm standing over him, yeah. I want to not have to say, "Hey, work that safety." You know, I want mm -hmm. you know, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. You know, oh you yeah, know, I, that kind of thing. Um, I make videos with my kids where we I go out and play the trumpet and, and have them shoot with me, and every which time, is what, which is my first time seeing you with the uh, trumpet. Yeah, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can check out all the gun grams on YouTube. If you look for G-U-N-G-R-A-M, I got 250 videos. I'm going to put a selfless plug in here. It's my show. It's, it's not a selfless show. plug. Right. If anybody knows somebody who knows somebody who's stationed on Antarctica, that is the only continent somebody has not watched a gun gram on. Contact me, charliesgungram at gmail.com. I want to get a video of someone watching a gun gram in a parka on Antarctica. Then all my videos will be and on every continent. That's why I call myself Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> there you I'm go. I'm Mr. Worldwide. And one so, of the main streets I didn't want you to go on, we're on. But whatever. Great. That's you know, all right. I think it's a good time of day right now. So. Yeah, it'll be all right. But, uh, so uh, I, I do the gun grams with my kids at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And at 17 and 19, uh, 17 and 19, I still go through the safety rules. Yeah. What are the safety rules? Finger off the trigger, safe direction, check to see if it's loaded. How do you check this? You do this, you do this, you do this. All right, cool. We're good to go. Yeah. And we still keep it unloaded until we get over to the area where we're filming the video. You know, you still follow the safety rules all the time. Okay. Uh, and the area I'm going to take you in now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see where the civil unrest happened a few years ago. Not the civil unrest related to the George Floyd incident. Make a left turn here. All right. Uh, but the civil unrest that happened here a couple years ago because a cop shot a, a young black dude and the city went up in arms when they found out a cop shot a black dude. Mm -hmm. Started looting, burning down things, rioting. Well, it turns out that the cop that shot the dude was also black. Oops. You know, doesn't fit the demographic. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fit the story. But wait, there's more. Oh, great. Turns out that this cop may or may not have had an inappropriate sexual relationship with this guy and didn't want the news getting out. This is not hearsay. This is fact. Whoa. You know. Okay. So, you know, because the same cop is now in jail because he raped another dude and threatened him with, you know, bodily harm and all that. And now this dude's in jail. So, wow. this is the cop now. So, this the same, the same cop who shot the guy. A lot of crazy stuff going on here in Milwaukee, man. Oh, man. Milwaukee <laughs> is brutal, man. Uh, you can thank a lot but of that. The emphasis to, on brew. <laughs> I told waka, you he's, waka, waka. he's here all week. All week. Yeah. Okay. You could thank you could thank a lot of the violence to this one right here in the back seat in her city. Absolutely not. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Milwaukee not. is. We get a lot of spillover from Chicago. Like if we stop seven, we stop ten people. Seven of them are gonna say that they're from Chicago. I promise you, or have roots in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, not that they're bad people. I'm just exaggerating. But a lot of times I gotta sneeze. It's terrible. Excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hand sanitizer. Oh yes. Um, here's here we go. Nope. Here's some. Oh. Don't open your bottle. Okay. Oh. Lens slinger hand sanitizer. Good for when you sneeze in your hands. The city went up in arms, uh, and so uh, I'll show you that whole area. But you know, I literally had to go in and get my family out of that area. Uh, it was ridiculous. You're gonna make a right turn here. Okay. Right behind the this bus. bus. Yeah. Is the bus taking a ride or is the bus? No, stuck? the bus is just pulling over. You gotta get behind it though, because you can't turn right in front of it. Uh, so anyway, nope, nope, go ahead. Turn into the gas station. Woo! There you go. What we just saw now, people, don't do. You know. <laughs> but yeah. If this was the wrong road, that's really bad. <laughs> no, this is the right road. This is the right road to do some wrong shit. Wrong stuff. So anyway. But uh, you know, it was just bad. I that was my first time witnessing civil unrest, you know, in a in an urban environment. Sure. Because of what is 
what was believed to be, uh, you know, a racist act, which wasn't because we'll come to find out, the cop was black, the guy was black, and uh, so was let me ask you this: if the cop is black and the guy was black, it's not a racist act. But if they're both gay, is it not a gay act? But <laughs> I mean, is it? You know, is it homophobia? Is it yeah. no? Because that had nothing to do with it. All that came out after the fact. Uh, gotcha. So if we look here, so it wasn't an issue until later. So no, it wasn't an issue. Uh, so if we look here, this mm -hmm. beauty store that we're seeing right Jet now beauty, that's Jet all boarded beauty. up. Yeah. Now that's boarded up because of the last riots from George Floyd. However, it burned down, so that's all new. If you look to your left and see that building that's dilapidated paint off yeah. of it with the red trim, mm -hmm. that was an auto parts store that got burned down and has never been back. Wow. Okay. Now it stopped pretty much stay here. Straight. Yep. Stay straight. You're gonna stay on Burleigh Street. So this is pretty much where it stopped. All this right here, this whole strip. Woo. This whole strip was on fire. All, that Sherman oh Phoenix right God. there was a bank. Okay, uh, that got burned down. All of that got burned down. There's the police district right there, Seventh District. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, uh, he's throwing up gang signs at you. Okay, uh, is that good or bad? I let him go. I mean, whatever. He was saying thank you, folks. You know, saying he's so folks. Uh, this is actually my son's grandmother's this, old house right there. This where whole I had to day has been family. an education for me. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> From He's Ron getting some Ronda good education. On the south side of Chicago, the whole day is an education. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so from where we saw on 27, on 35th Street, all the way down uh, to up, up here, looting, rioting, burning. Okay. And it's, I mean, it's all this. And these are all homes. They, they were, they were, yeah. this home was, was burned and looted right there. Uh, that bar was this shop they kind of left alone Man. but all of this now as, as we approach 43rd Street which is Sherman Boulevard here in Wisconsin and Milwaukee uh, this was burned to the ground this gas station they just rebuilt the this Sitco mm -hmm. I mean literally to the ground so what you see now wow. is brand new but all the protests and all the other things after happened right here and this little area this street and this street the store that was there before burned to the ground uh it was just ridiculous i mean this whole stretch of street uh and then we go up here to about 46th street and uh that is where kind of it started to dissipate and and, and shell out but as you can as you also see as we go further west things begin to change demographically speaking so Crazy. This is crazy. Milwaukee is, and it always has been, uh, one of the most violent cities in America. But we're smaller, so and we're not yeah, it's a like major off the radar. name. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. So nobody knows. But you know, for a long time, we were you know in the top ten uh, as far as violence in in the country. Mm -hmm. And it's a scary place to be when you live in those places, especially as a parent. Especially yeah. as a person who's out in the streets every day, uh, like because I'm in the school in the school system, so I'm out here every day mm -hmm. uh, dealing with children and sometimes their ignorant parents and mm -hmm. uh, the same people who are committing acts. Like a, a lot of our parents are are unfortunate. A lot of our students' parents are the parents who committed some really really heinous acts and that we see on the news here in the city. You know, uh, and I mean, but that's just you know working in a public school system. So right. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying anything that anything is related. One is related to the other. It's just, right. you know, it's more likely to happen in a public school system because it's a lot larger than a private school. So, yeah. so uh, but this area right here, as you start to come down west on Burleigh, come up Burleigh West, uh, more of a predominantly Jewish neighborhood, actually. Uh, the traditional Orthodox and Hasidic Jews. Uh, and as we, if we go down 45th Street, 54th Street, rather, that's where uh, I grew up. Want to go down that way? Well, we can if you want to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right, right here. Yeah. But, uh, and then, uh, matter of fact, I, I, I'll get to show you. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen my video about my why I need my AR-15 story. I, I have seen it. Okay. Seen it. This uh, I, this looks completely different from three blocks ago. It does. Look at, the, I mean, look these, at these homes. These are nice, uh, nice older houses, probably from, I don't know, the 50s or something? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and there's trees and it's beautiful. It's it beautiful, is. and it's it's three blocks away. No trash on the ground. Yeah, you know, and it's like uh, you know, and, and like yeah. I mean, I'm, and, and it's a mixed neighborhood. It's you'll, you'll find white people, you'll find black people, you'll find Hispanics and Asians. Yeah. You know, it's this is 
this is Milwaukee. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is Milwaukee. Uh, actually, this is a, a twelve a twelve way intersection. Holy moly! Yeah, it's ridiculous. What do we do here? Go There's no cars. It doesn't matter. Yeah, go straight. Here we go. <laughs> Which straight? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's this. Yeah, I told you, driving here is is a challenge, and you're getting the the easy easy version of it. Right. Yeah. So as you'll see, like there's a young Jewish fellow right there. So this I is a very young. Oh no, no, you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, he's young. Who am I to judge? Just because he has silver hair. So right, he's, he's not as old as most. He's right. at 500. But, right. Uh, right. But he's like, like I'm saying, hair. this is a very, very uh, diverse area. Uh, and you know, in my video, people swear that I it was in the it was in the hood, you know, or in the ghetto, meaning a place where black people live and do crime, right. you know. Uh, and that that couldn't be further from the truth. Like the truth is, evil doesn't have a location. It doesn't have a motive other than doing evil. Make a left. Yeah. Uh, so this is the I'm going to take you to the neighborhood and the house I lived in, that where I had to you know step outside with my AR because they were trying to break into the home. Gonna make a right on 56th next block, right. and this is like I said, this is a nice this block. This is a nice neighborhood. I can make a right here, yeah, and it gets even better. Like, so this third house on the corner, the the kind of uh, with the red trim, yeah, that's the duplex I lived in. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a little shabby now, but I don't know who's taking care of it. But that's where I lived, uh, and this is the neighborhood. I mean, my neighbor's white. You know, the people over here are are, are Asian, mm -hmm. and there's some Jewish folks all up and down here. So it's not about I lived in the hood. It's just about it's, it, yeah. There's no way you would convince me this is the hood. But here's here's what happens. So you look at the Mikulskis, right? Mm -hmm. So how people are praising them for protecting their home, mm -hmm. right? And you look at my situation where my home was an actual threat, uh, an actual threat, and I get called a liar, I get called a drug dealer, I get called all kind of names. And I wonder why that is, you know, and that's that's the racist roots that we're talking about. Make a right turn. Uh, so a beautiful neighborhood. And I live, you know, not too far from my parents' home. Uh, and I know they don't want me to show their house, but this is, you know, where, we, where my parents worked so hard to move to. We yeah. were one of the first black families on the block. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, right now we're looking at my childhood bedroom. <laughs> That's my parents' home. You know, right here. So it's like, wow. you know, like this is this is the neighborhood I grew up in. Mm. You know, so it's not like a, a hood neighborhood or, or, no, or anything. Like not at all. But where we came from down Burleigh, that's the other part where I grew up. Yeah. You know, so I had the best of both worlds. So I saw and learned how to maintain in the hood. You know, and I also saw what it was like to come out of the hood. So, you know, I can sit at any table and have any conversation with anybody. But, you know, it, it, it's different. You know, and people, people somehow, sometimes, well, a lot of times, think that all black neighborhoods are just that. Make it right. And they're not. You know, and they're yeah, not they're that. Absolutely not. Yeah. So you got a little little bit of my history, but that, that's but cool. that, but that house there—that's how I got started. So had that situation not happened over there, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know you all, because that's what prompted me to be vocal about, you, you know, your gun rights and all. Yeah. yeah, you haven't done this. This only happened a few years ago, right? About eight years ago. Yeah. Eight years ago. Yeah, about eight years ago now. Cool, man. Yeah. So that's how I. That's how I did it, man. That's how Argo J came to be. Yeah. Not the name. The name came from being the only black guy on the range. Make a right turn here. <laughs> yeah. So no, seriously, like. <laughs> All right, dish. Okay. <laughs> you like, can't throw that out. There I didn't. Oh, and not. Well, most people. I forget that people don't know it, but I, you know, you're gonna make a right, right. I'm gonna here make a right after as, this car. Yeah. Uh, you know, going to the range is difficult when you're black here, um, because as you notice, we just went to the to the uh, gun range, and. A young lady was accusing the people that work in there that she was being mistreated because she was black. No, she wasn't being mistreated because she was black. She was being mistreated, be not mistreated. She was not being treated how she wanted to be treated right. because she was wrong and wasn't following the rules and guidelines that were safe and legal. And that's just that. If you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't mm -hmm. care what color you are. Uh, uh, but here, a lot of times, Outside of my home range that we just went to, and another range that I go with WFTC up in uh, uh, by my house, uh, if you're black.
black and you go in, you get treated a certain way. You get looked at a certain way. Uh, people handle you a certain way. I even had one shop tell a person, like, you can't purchase a gun. Legally, this is the law, that you can't purchase a gun unless you own your CCW. Yeah, that's, that's baloney. That's baloney. You know what I mean? But that's what they do to weed out the unwanted black gun buyer. You know what I mean? Sure. And certain people just would rather not sell you a gun. I had one, there's another shop that has a similar name to Brew City Shooter Supply. Okay. Uh, and one of the, one of the companies sent the gun, a gun to Brew City by mistake. Oh, okay. Man. Wrong FFL. Yeah. So the guy from the other shop came in to pick up the gun. And I'm in the back. As he comes up, he sees one of the uh, other guys who's Peruvian, who doesn't look Peruvian, he looks pretty much like a white guy, mm -hmm. and another white guy, and another Mexican guy were at the counter uh, working, and I was in the back working on guns, and, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm here from this shop, whatever, blah, 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 uh, I'm here to pick up this gun, and then we were like, oh, we were wondering where this gun came from, because we don't sell these guns, blah, 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 Yeah. he's like, I know, those fucking niggers and their guns, you know what I mean, like, and it, or in, or the fucking nigger guns or something. Excuse my language again, but I feel like that needs to be said. But that's that's what happened, and I'm like, wow, that's how these people, these shop owners feel. And then when he said that, I popped, you know, I stepped into the doorway. <laughs> you know, I stepped into the doorway and I look, and I'm like, I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. You know, and I step into the doorway and I look. And I just stand in the doorway, making eye contact with him and watching him get beat red, you know, and he was bald and short and whatever, you know, you know who you are if you ever see this, uh, you know, and I didn't want to act on it because you know, then I would become who he was saying exists. Right, and then, that doesn't then you're, exist. you're feeding into right. a stereotype. And but I wanted him to know that, hey, you just messed up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, and things could go a whole different route if I'd have been a whole different person. But, oh, you know, you know, so it, it is like that. And unfortunately, you know, when you go to the range, people look at you crazy. But then when you're black and you got stuff that they don't, as, uh, you know, think that you should have or could have, they're like, oh, my God, why do you have that? Or how do you have that? And I said, well, I built it. And then they look at you like I got a thumb growing out of my forehead. Like you <laughs> built that AR. Yeah, I built it, you know, so, you know. I was joking to one of my friends, uh, another black guy and his brother, we were coming back from the range, and I said, yeah, we should start a group and we should call it the African American Association for Responsible Gun Ownership, and we'll call it Argo for short, you know what I mean, and I, I was joking, and I okay. said that, and I was like, whatever, but that name kind of stuck in my head, and then I was like, I need to do a video on that situation that I had with yeah. uh, the AR, and I needed a moniker for YouTube, and I was like, well, I'll use Argo. So I said, Argo J. I never J. remember if it's two A's or three. Three A's. Okay. Yeah, like triple A, yep. I, so, wait, so. I wait for the spell check to bring it up. Yeah, triple, triple A, R, G, O. There it is. So, uh, But yeah, so that's how I got my name, Argo. Argo is actually an acronym. It stands for Afri African American Association for Responsible Gun Ownership. That's cool. Yeah. That is cool, man. Yeah, so maybe I should actually start that, huh? I think you should. <laughs> Huh, Rhonda? You said something back there? Absolutely. It All right. Great. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is ridiculous, and I apologize for what I'm about to say. There is a group of the uh, the National Association of African American Gun Owners. NAGA, yeah. Right. Could they have come up with a different name? Only people who think about the N-word yeah. related to the N-word. Okay. So what are you I'm really like, thinking, Charlie? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm thinking this interview needs to end right now. No, no. <laughs> no, because no. I'm like, wait a second. No. Wait a second. Can, I they, mean, can they really? I mean, I, mean, I don't this? even think that it, I mean, maybe after, it was one of those afterthoughts. Like, right. You know, and, and this is what we are. Puddle. This is what that was a big puddle. Yeah. This is what we are. This is what we call ourselves. Okay, cool. I'm like, wait, wait a second. Yeah, really? people say that all the time, but you know, I mean, it is what it is, and they're a great group. Yeah. You know, a matter of fact, I think the second time I met you was at yeah. a NAGA function, or not a. It was at a the gun, the Black Guns Matter function, and NAGA was there. Never. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. You're sorry, something else. She is a socialite. She goes to all these things. She can't remember where she meets people. Hey, but I, but I, but I met her at a with with the Naga people that they were there. So anyway, you know, and there are a lot of gun clubs, black gun clubs in, in Illinois. The 761st is there. Right. Naga's, you know, got a chapter there. Uh, but uh, and you're gonna go straight. Great guys, there are. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, dude, I have oh no God. idea where we're at. Yeah, we're back. This is where we came out and made the left. So uh, we're just going to go straight. Okay. We just made a big circle. Milwaukee's not that big, but it's big. 
you know, so, yeah. All right. We're going to go back down by the lakefront and all that. All right. But, uh, we get some nice footage down there because it's beautiful down by our lakefront. Cool. Uh, we need to do more business down there, but they don't want businesses on the lakefront, you know. If we put businesses down the, on the lakefront, uh, this city would have an economical boost that would be through the roof. But the powers that be and the people who live there and own the fancy homes there and uh, the beach goers and right, things, they don't want businesses. They don't want, and, you know, because with businesses comes the the responsibility, people. <laughs> comes people, comes the responsibility of upkeep of, mm -hmm. of, of more populated uh, areas. So it would it would take away from the beach, but I, you know. I gotta say that we sh they should do more there. Yeah. But, but yeah. So. Man. This is, this, is, going on. this is awesome. This is Milwaukee. It's a, and it, it's a beautiful, terrible, beautiful place. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's so much beauty here, uh, and it sometimes get out. It gets outweighed by the things that happen that are negative. Sure. Uh, now, if you look down here, this is a predominantly black area, but we nice older homes. Look at these homes, like. Mm. And these, these are just like the, the the other houses, right? However, this area is where we had a we had a, 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 a area of town called Brownsville, uh, where it was just like kind of like Black Wall Street, okay, okay. in Milwaukee. Oh, uh, Brownsville. Uh, no, uh, Black Wall Street in Tulsa. Tulsa. Right, right, right. But in Milwaukee, we kind of had it called Brownsville, and after that area got gentrified, got moved, and other bigger businesses and, and things came. A lot of the people moved to this area, mm -hmm. so these are the homes uh, that those people had, and, and you know the well-off uh, black people moved to back in the 30s and 40s and the 50s, you know, when it was very hard to be well-off and in, in, in black. Mm -hmm. You know, I very seldom use the term African American because I don't believe in that because uh, I don't know any parts of Africa. You know, like, yeah. I was born here. Yes, my ancestors came there, but it's like. Come on, like we've been the people that have been identity list for so long. Uh, like, like they just gotta call us something. And I, I'm black. I'm a I, black American. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I, I used to play in a band. I, I played in a Motown disco funk band for a long time. And uh, one of the guys in our band was um, he was Jamaican. Mm -hmm. And you know, people would call him African American. I'm like, he's not. He's Jamaican. And they and people people hate he's that. He's not even American. Right. He's Jamaican. Right. Right. Like I called him Maman because he called everybody Maman. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But so. see, the, and that and that's the thing. Like that, the day I stopped was in Glencoe. Uh, I was looking at the dude next to me, um, fill out his paperwork, and I just happened to see him check African American, and he was a white guy because he was from Morocco. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was from Africa, but he was now an American citizen. That's my high school, by the way. Oh. Uh, yep. So that's where we held world cha uh, state championships for basketball. That's where I learned to be a monster on that diamond. Uh, did all that right there, <laughs> Mesmer High School. Shout out, go Bishops. But anyway, <laughs> but, yeah, no, no, no. Maybe now though, because I'm old and can't move. But you know, but uh, but yeah, no. It's you know, it, you know. I don't know. Uh, this is what I find. I'd stay with the same thing that you were just talking about. Um, Dave Matthews. Mm -hmm. He was born in South Africa. So mm -hmm. I'm like, well. Dave Matthews is African. Mm -hmm. He's not an American citizen. Right. No, so he's an African American. He can check African American. Pale as they come. You know, receding we, hairline, the whole deal. We <laughs> black people go through so much that people don't understand. I know this has been an, an, an kind of a in depth kind of dive into Black America this trip, you know, for you. But it's like first we were the N word. You know, we were niggers. Right. You know. Then we were Negro, because that was the closest thing to nigger that right, you could get. It was, cleaned a, up. it was a cleaner yeah. version of that. Then we were colored. Well, you know, and then we were colored. Right. And the then we were Negro and colored. And then we were black. And then we were black Americans. Then we were African Americans. And then it just, you know, the identity never sticks. You know, there's never been a group of people that has been sans identity so long on American soil like black Americans hmm. and it, even in self even with ourselves you know some of us still struggle as to what as what to call each other you know I right. you, you always hear me say black Americans I rarely say African American mm -hmm. I hate that term I absolutely hate it because yeah. you know I have no parts in Africa you know my great grandfather is 100% German my dad's grandfather is 100% German Wilhelm Schnell came to America. Can't get any more German than 
Wilhelm Schnell. No, like, uh, <laughs> like legitimately. You know what I mean? Right. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I go. We have festivals down here um, at the festival grounds. You know, and I go to German Fest every year because it's part of my heritage, and I want to learn more about that. All right. You know what I mean? And then you go there, and they offer you to say, "Here, do you take the car, park it, please?" We don't. No, right. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, you know, but no. But seriously, you know, my grandmother, my dad's father, cooked you know German meals and then uh, traditional German dishes because she learned to cook from her dad. Mm. So my dad grew up getting soul food and German food at the same time. Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? And German yeah. food is really good. Like, but uh, some of it is, some of it isn't. But that's like anything. But you know, like he's a hundred percent German. Right. So it's like. Uh, and when he came, you know, to the United States, he was a more darker complexion. Uh, and I, I have the sense I went, you know, on uh, Ancestry and cut the census reports. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, he started calling himself Negro because he was darker skinned, but because he fell in love with a black woman, which was uh, nothing. A little bit easier. It was a little bit easier if he called himself a Negro. Yeah. Uh, but he wasn't. He was 100% German, just more olive cup complexion. Uh, but, wow. you know, this is in Mississippi. Oh my God! Right. And it's your grandpa? My great grandfather, great my dad's. Grandpa. Grandpa. So that would have never. My grandmother's. That would have never gone over. Never gone over. Especially in Mississippi. No, it, and that, and in fact, that's how they came north. Uh, they came north because of the fact that he fell in love with a black woman. Uh, lives were threatened. Family was threatened. Yeah. It's time to get out of Natchez. You know what I mean? So yeah, they so. they moved to the Champaign, Illinois. So uh, that's where my grandfather met my grandmother. Is in Champaign, Illinois. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but yeah, no. So I, you know, part of my heritage is German. So yeah. I know nothing about Africa. Other than that, you know, we're descendants of slaves and West Indian. But you know, that's Africa by transport through the diaspora. But then, you know, that's a whole other issue. I I've been saying this for forever. Um, when people say, so you know, what's your nationality? I say, I'm an Amer I'm an American. They're like, well, no. Where did your where did your you know parents come from? America. America. Where did your grandparents come from? America? Right. How about your great grandparents? America? There you go. Like, how many generations do we have to go before I can just say, I'm an American? I'm an American. Now, don't get me wrong. Embrace your roots. If you're oh, like, sure. like, 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 uh, so, so what is your, what is your, heritage? so Cook is English. Okay. There is, uh, my grandfather on my mother's side is, uh, last name was Anderson, so he's Swedish. Okay. My grandmother on my Dad's side was a Weissman, so I called one of my Jewish friends. I'm like, I'm part in the club. I'm part Jewish. <laughs> there She's you like, go. there's nothing that says Jewish about you, Charlie. There's nothing Jewish. Um, right. There's, uh, uh, I think on my grandfather's side, on my dad's side, I think there's some um, American Indian or Native American or Indigenous people. Right. I, I don't know how far you have to go back. I, this is this is the honest God truth. I asked my mother these two questions. Uh, Staying straight? Stay straight, yeah. All right. I asked my mother these two questions, and I'm glad that I, I get to bring this up in, in Wisconsin. I asked my mother these two questions in high school. The one question was, Mom, are we Republicans or Democrats? And Mom, what is our, uh, what's our heritage? Mm -hmm. Her answer to both of them was the same. God rest her soul. God rest my mother's soul. Her answer was, well, I'm from Wisconsin, and your father's from Tennessee. And I'm like... You said that, and I saw, I was getting ready to say, she's got to be from Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm like, this doesn't help me at all. This doesn't help me. I have no idea what the hell that means. Where's she from in Wisconsin? Um, I'm going to say Hayward. I think my that's grandmother was from Hayward, north. way north. Yeah, that's yeah. north, north. And they have a, they have a, a fish music. I have a... I have a phobia of fish. I hate to admit this in front of people. I have a phobia of fish. And there was this huge fish museum of a walleye, or no, a muskie, and you'd climb in the tail, you'd go up to the top, mm -hmm. and- uh, Slide down and smile? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I've traumatized myself, I can't remember. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, we're, we're from Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin, your father's from Tennessee. I'm like, that, that doesn't answer my question. So if I send really you a fish it. in the mail, would that be bad? <laughs> you, probably, you probably know what it was by the time it got to you. Right. But, yeah. but no, seriously though, man, it, it, you know, embrace your heritage. But we all are, we're, we're all here. We all fly under one flag. You know what I mean? Whatever flag you fly under the stars and stripes, that's fine. I don't care. Mm. You know, as long as that star, as long as old glory's flying, then you're my brother and sister. And that's it. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white, if you're Jewish, if you're gay, if you're straight. It doesn't matter. You know, matter. it doesn't matter. Like, uh, you know, so uh, what we're seeing now, that's the lakefront. So that oh, okay. is not sky. That's Lake Michigan. That's Lake Michigan. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's Lake Michigan as far out as you can see over right here. So. Oh man, that is cool. That is awesome. That is cool. Yeah. All right. So well, we're gonna get into the million, multi-million dollar homes here. As a matter of fact, this is my running route when I was training for the marshals for, for the run for the physical fitness portion. Uh, from this park down to uh, the other park is exactly one mile. So from there and back is two miles, and I would time myself to make it in under the time. So cool. Yeah, yeah. But this is it, man. This is awesome. This is just a portion of it because this is the residential area of mm -hmm. it, and you know these houses are huge. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is Shorewood. Yeah, so. All know. right, I think we need to wrap it up. All we've, right. been, we've been doing this for an hour. We have. Time we have. flies, man. I love it. We have. We did. Look, I didn't even get to talk about the rifle or the documentary. Or none of oh, that my shit. God. <laughs> so, But that's good. We'll, we'll do it another time because well, I was just uh, glad to get in on it. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to have you in the car. I'm glad to have Rhonda in the car. And this is quite as she's been all day. Right. <laughs> and, and, and look, all the stuff that we talked about at the range, we didn't even discuss any of that. This is, that's all stuff it's, that we should have discussed here. Yeah. On, uh, you know, in the ride. But, uh, it's uh look at that fountain that's nice it's okay to relax and listen and learn a little bit it is i don't have to be the star of the show because i'm just it's not my my ride I, i'm here to do some shooting do some shooting and learn some things today and i want to see our go you know in. yeah yeah uh as ken Bl as the reverend ken blanchard says anyone that gives you a gun is family and anyone that wants to take your gun is an enemy that's it and uh, I'm really right. glad y'all got to come through, though. I really am. I do want to put links to the stuff, so talk about uh, Bravo Oscar. Okay. Uh, so the Bravo Oscar, look at that house. That's beautiful. We're trying to stay focused. I am. I am, man. Uh, <laughs> I just love it. I love my city. Like I said, I love it and I hate it. But anyway, uh, no, the Bravo Oscar is uh, my signature rifle, and it's a hell of a rifle. It's being made by uh, American Defense Make right. uh, American Defense Manufacturing. Um, and that's a Wisconsin company. Uh, it's got a lot of great parts. It's got a Criterion barrel in it. It's got a CMC three and a half pound flat trigger in it. It's got Radian uh, Ambi safety, Radian uh, Talon. I mean, uh, the Ambi mag release I thought was really cool. Oh, no, oh, slice stop. The, the, bolt, the, release. the bolt release and bolt catch. Yeah. You know, and that's the ADM, the proprietary um, uh, ambidextrous feature, true Ambi feature, the release and the catch on both sides. And the catch is, uh, it's very small, it's very minimal, mm -hmm. but it's placed great and, you know, it, it it's just super functional. You don't see ambidextrous guns built like that. Mm. Uh, and if you do see one that's built fairly decent, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg for yeah. a true ambi gun. And this doesn't. Uh, and, you know, I was always building guns, trying to make guns ambi. And I said, well, you know what? Why don't I reach out to the people who actually make ambi guns and talk to them? And I did. And they helped me. And they helped me come up with my signature rifle. And we call it the Bravo Oscar. Uh, and it's got a 14 and a half inch pin and welded Griffin armament uh, flash comp on there, so it's suppressor ready out of the box. Uh, it's just great, man. Uh, the good thing about that is that American Defense Manufacturing has also said that they're going to donate a portion of the proceeds to uh, the documentary that I wrote. I wrote a documentary called Black Ops, and it stands for Black Opinion in Popular Society. And it's trying to change the image and perception of black males specifically in America. But black Americans, when it comes to firearms, we're not all criminals like we were just talking about. We're not all criminals and thugs and gangbangers and drug dealers and pimps and whatever. Uh, we're not that. You know, we are a viable part of the populace in America and it needs to be main. It needs to be more mainstream. That idea and that vision needs to be, that visual rather, needs to be more mainstream. That's everything in a nutshell right there. That so, is everything in a nutshell. Yeah. No, awesome. that's just me in a nutshell. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> so. Emphasis on nut. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, I'm going to put links to all this stuff. I want to thank you guys all for watching. This is probably the episode I've talked the least in because it's I'm, I'm taking it all in. I'm a motor mouth. Man. I know. This is, it's good for me to talk with uh, talk with other people that are talkers. Yeah, it is. All right. So, listen, we're going to put links for all of Argo J stuff. Uh, thank you very much for being on the show. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you um, for having me. And thank you for coming to Milwaukee. I know you came. I know you're you know, dealing with your mother's burial and all that. And it was it was an honor that you took time from away from your family to come up here and talk to me. And I really appreciate that. And I wanted you to know 
that I appreciate that because you didn't have to do that. I did, but this is how I write out all of my taxes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you try to have a moment with this dude, and he won't even let him let you no, kiss I, him. Dude. I, like I, it's I, like no, I, I, I do appreciate. No, that. It's okay. I, I really do. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna put links to all your stuff. Uh, you gotta give me links to all your stuff. I'll give you're you gonna those. put links for all that for yep. for the Black Ops. Yep. For the um, Bravo Oscar. For the Bravo Oscar. Here come the cops. Not for you. I hope not. They are pulling someone over. Yep, not you. All right. Uh, we have Rhonda Azell in the back. That's why they're. Hi? That's why they're back there. Can you just say hi? It's he can. Cool. Say, we're, we're saying goodbye now. Hello, goodbye, everyone. It was a great day. It was great to come up and get an opportunity to shoot with these guys and learn a few things. Where can people find you? Come on, girl. Well, you can find me at. M S underscore E Z E L L backslash Twitter, Rhonda E Z L backslash Facebook, and www.chicagogunsmatter.org. All right. And Chicago Guns Matter 312 on Instagram. Shy Guns Matter. <laughs> we're going to put both of them on there. <laughs> there it just is. To cover. It's, it's I don't much, care. It's too much to keep up with. Uh, it is. It That's is. all right. It is. All right, listen, check out all of the other podcast on the Self-Defense Radio Network, SDRN.us. Please like and share all of the writing shotguns on YouTube, on GunStreamer, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on iHeartRadio. This is how we get the stagecoach across America. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you guys. Peace. <laughs>